Welcome to Get Connected! Woo! It's great to have you all back with us. This week, we're going to be focusing on following God's commands. I'm excited and I'm ready. Are you? Come join me. Let's go! Join in and thank God together. Make it personal from you to Him. That's what it's about. Thank you God for this moment right now. Now is the time to thank God. Coming together in the name of Jesus Christ. Believing that you Holy Spirit are the helper and will reveal the things of God. The things that God has for me and for you today. I look forward to hearing what you have to say about following you and your commands. Through our King David series, cause me to know what it means. I know it will be the best way for me to go. Jesus, you're always doing new things. And following you is exciting. Yes, cause me to be excited about following you. Help me to be excited and learn something new about you, God, today. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you ready for today's cable tie? Today's cable tie comes from Acts 5 verse 29. Let's read. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. That's Acts 5 verse 29. Let's read it one more time. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. Nobody knows like our God knows. He knows everything. He can see everything and he can do anything. He alone is God. Now who better to follow than God? He follow his commands and follow his instructions because he is all knowing all seeing and can do anything. To help me to remember this, every day I have made a little poster that I'm gonna just hang up by my door and it says, our cable tie. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. See if you can make one. I printed it out from a computer, typed it in, printed it out, stuck it on some card to make a nice frame and I'm gonna hang it on my door. So every time before I leave the house, I can remember our cable tie. Let's read it together again. It's Acts 5 verse 29. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must 
obey God rather than human beings. We are to follow his commands and his instructions for he alone is God. Welcome to Plugged In. Woo! Are you ready for your first game? Yes! The, this game is called Kingdom Up. The aim of the game is to keep the tennis ball in the air as long as you can with the racket. Kid of Kids, remember to vote for 19 or 82. Are you ready? Yes! Your 30 seconds starts now. It's not as easy as it looks, Kingdom Kids. Oh, 19. This is very easy. No, it's not 19. Let's try harder than easy. Yes, Kingdom oh. Kids, keep voting. Come on, Kingdom Kids. 19. Oh. Hey, kid. Come on, Kingdom Kids. Are you playing along too? Playing along with 1982, your time is up. Kiddo kids, you decide who the winner is. Vote for 82, Kiddo kids. Vote for 19. Vote for 82, Kiddo kids. Vote for 19. Vote for 82, Kiddo kids. Vote for 19. 19 is good, but vote for 82, Kiddo kids. Vote for 19. Two Samuel chapter six, verses one to fifteen. David again brought together out of Israel chosen men, thirty thousand in all. He and all his men set out from Bala of Judah to bring up from there the Ark of God, which is called by the name, the name of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubim that are on the Ark. They set the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart with the Ark of God on it, and Ahio was walking in front of it. David and the whole house of Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord with songs. When they came to the threshing floor of Nakon, Uzzah reached out and took hold of the Ark of God, because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah because of his irreverent act, and therefore God struck him down, and he died there beside the Ark of God. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzzah, and to this day, that place is called Perez Uzzah. David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How can the Ark of the Lord ever come to me? He was not willing to take the Ark of the Lord to be with him in the city of David. Instead, he took it aside to the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. The Ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite for three months, and the Lord blessed him and his entire household. Now King David was told, the Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and everything he has because of the Ark of God. So David went down and brought up the Ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. When those who were carrying the Ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. David, wearing a linen ephod, danced before the Lord with all his might, while he and the entire house of Israel brought up the Ark of the Lord with shouts and the sound of trumpets. As we continue with our King David series, I have a question for you. How easy do you find it following instructions or to ask for help? Or do you say, I know how, how so I don't need any help? And did you find it quite easy to do? Well, today we speak of someone in the Bible whose name was David. And he was a king of Israel. And he loved God. He wanted to show how great a king he was. So he decided to bring back the Ark of God from Judah to Jerusalem. So he consulted with his officers and the people of Israel and they all thought this is a great idea. Yes, let's do it. The ark was a symbol 
that represents the presence of God. And wherever the presence of God is, there is liberty, there is freedom. David gathered thousands of his men out of Israel and together they set out to bring back the Ark of God from Judah to Jerusalem. They took the Ark from the house of a man by the name of Abinadab and they placed the Ark on a new car and set men to guide it and someone to walk before it. David and the whole house of Israel, they were celebrating with music and dancing using all type of instruments. They were having a great time. And David thought, God would love this, this is great. David, however, did not consult God about bringing the ark back to Jerusalem. He did not follow the instructions that God had laid down for how the ark should be returned. <clears throat> King David did it his way. He thought his way was a good way. And so disaster struck the people and David was very angry with God because of this. But, but when we are disobedient, we pay the consequence. David did it his way. And so often we think that what we do is the best way. We ignore what God asks us to do. So sometimes we do things and it starts out so well. And we think we are doing what God asks us to do. But somewhere along the line, the atmosphere changes. And what happened? We become angry with God. We begin to blame God. But when we check ourselves, we see that what we're doing is not what God wants us to do. We're doing what we want to do. And we do pay the consequence. However, David acknowledged that what he was doing was not right. And so he asked the Lord for help. When David chose to do it God's way, then everything came together. And so he was able to bring the heart back from Judah to Jerusalem. It is important for us to acknowledge our sins and ask God to forgive us through Jesus. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. That's what his word says. So we need to confess, we need to turn back and ask God. When we obey God, we know that he will guide us safely through. God loves us and he will correct us. Whenever we, whatever we do, we should always seek God. Seek his will, ask him, and he will show us what to do. God is holy, he is sovereign, he is Lord of all, and we must give him reverence. Obey him, do what he says, and follow his instructions. Seek him for guidance in everything you do. You will not fail when you trust God. When you read his words, you will know what he wants us to do. The Bible says that we must let his word dwell richly in us. When we have the word in, in, in us, we can act on what it says. We will have peace and the blessings of God will follow us. Let us live in obedience 
comes to our Heavenly Father. So the word for you today is seek God first before you do anything because he will always direct our path. So let's pray that God, that we will seek God to do his will in whatever, great or small, God loves us and, we, and he will lead us in the right path, but we must obey what he says. Amen. How great God has spoken to us today. What a great God that you are. What a great God you are, God. You're all-knowing, all-powerful, and everywhere all at once. I can't hide from you. You know what I've done, whether it was right or whether it was wrong. I ask you to forgive me for the wrongs I have done. May the Holy Spirit help me to follow you, God, and your ways and your instructions. Those instructions that you give to me. I want to please you, God. Help me to read your word and store it in my heart. Help me, help me, God, I need it. As Psalm 119 says, 119 verse 11, tells me to read God's heart, God's word, <laughs> and store it in my heart. Yes, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. Help me to follow your commands and instructions. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. as we go through every our day. I pray that you will follow us and guide us and stay with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, 1982, are you ready for your second game? This game is called Kingdom Eat. The aim of the game is to eat your eyes or you as fast as you can. Are you ready? Come on, 90. Come on, 82. You could do this. Kinder kids, who do you think is going to finish first? Keep eating away. 19 and 82 uh, tried not the hardest not to get brain freeze. It's not easy. Kinder kids, who do you think the winner is going to be? It's a great game for a hot day, isn't it, kid of kids? Nineteen's doing really well, isn't it, kid of kids? Looks like nineteen's almost on the second ice pot lolly.
Give me a kiss. Who do you think the winner is? Okay, kiddo kids, you decide who the winner is. We're for me, kiddo kids, vote for 82. Vote for 19. Vote for 82, kiddo kids, but give up, give up, full of a round for 19. He did great, kiddo kids. Woo! We had a lot of fun today, didn't we, kiddo kids? I hope you had fun and you joined with us. And try some of these games at home with your family. Especially this tennis uh, racket game. Yeah. And even the ice lolly game. Let's see who can eat those ice lollies the quickest. Definitely. I've been 19. And I'm 82. And we're out. out. Fantastic. We learned a lot today, didn't we, Kingdom Kids? We learned when you don't follow God's commandments, destruction follows. But when you do follow God's commandments, Blessings are poured out into our lives. Look at King David. He talked with all of his officers and all of Israel about how to move the ark, which represents the presence of God, to Jerusalem. But he didn't consult God. And God gave him instructions. However, he didn't listen once again. We should always remember, listen to God's commandments and not to do things our way because God knows best. I had a blast with you all. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Bye, Kingdom Kids.